So today, we are changing repeating decimals to fractions, or specifically, repeating decimals where there are two digits repeating. For example, 0 0.316, where the 1, 6 are, is repeating, and the 0 0.7291, where 9, 1 are both repeating. All right. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to change repeating decimals to fractions where one digit repeats, and the process is the same. There's just one little thing you have to watch out for that's different. But let's go through the steps. All right, step one, we are going to write an equation using the number we're given. In this case, 0 0.316 repeating. So I'm going to say x equals 0 0.316. And since 1, 6 repeats, I like to write it out a little bit so I can see some of the digits. 0 0.316161616161616. All right, step two. We are going to make a second equation out of this by multiplying both sides by a number. What number? Well, that number is going to be determined by 10 to the power of however many digits are repeating. Now, if one digit was repeating, we'd do 10 to the first power. But in this case, we've got two digits repeating. So we have to do 10 to the second power. 10 to the second power means 10 times 10, which is 100. So what that tells me is, to make my second equation, I'm going to have to multiply both sides of these equations by 100. All right, so at first you're going to think, well, that's going to make it really big. But really, it's not, because x times 100 is just 100x. And multiplying this crazy decimal by 100, all it does is move that decimal place over two spots. So this thing becomes 31.61616 dot 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 dot. Because remember that 1616 is just going to repeat forever. All right? So now we've just made a second equation. Step three. We are going to take this new equation and subtract the original equation from it. OK? So I'm going to take this original equation, x equals 0 0.3161616161616 forever. 61616. And I'm going to write it underneath it, and I'm going to subtract these two equations. And notice how I wrote it. Notice when I put this one underneath it, I lined the x's up, I lined the equal signs up, and I try to line the digits up based on the decimal point because I know I'm going to be subtracting them, so I need to have those digits lined up when I subtract them. Okay? Okay, so let's subtract this. 100x's minus 1x is 99x's. The equals drops down. And when I subtract the other side, because we multiplied both sides by 100, it will always be the case that these repeating digits will subtract off perfectly. Here's what I mean. See, if we start on the end and we subtract, 6 minus 6 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, and all the 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6 afterwards, they're all going to subtract off because they'll be the same number on top as there is on the bottom. So when we, when we do 6 minus 6, we'll get nothing. 1 minus 1, nothing. So these all zero out. Until we get to here, 6 minus 3 is 3. Drop down my decimal. 31 minus 0, 31. So when I subtracted those two repeating decimals, it comes out to... 31.3 without any repeating decimals. All right, so we're about a step away here because step four, solve for x and then simplify your fraction. Okay, to get x by itself, I need to divide by 99 on both sides of the equal sign. When I do that, the 99s undo each other, so I get x equals. On the other side, I want my answer as a fraction, so I'm going to keep it in this fraction form. 31.3 divided by 99 is the same as 31.3 99ths. All right, we're almost done, but notice we have a fraction with a decimal in it. We're not allowed to have decimals in a fraction. So we need to, we need to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction to make it all whole numbers. And the easiest way to do that is just to multiply it by 10 because multiplying numbers by 10 moves the decimal over one spot. So when I do that, 31.3 times 10 moves the decimal over to get 313. And 99 times 10 is 990. 
Can I simplify this? Nope, I cannot. That is going to be my fraction. So this fraction is equal to that repeating decimal. And of course, you can always check to make sure you're right using a calculator. 313 divided by 990. Look at that. 0 0.3161616. Exactly what we were expecting it to be. All right. Let's do another example so you can see it again. This one's a little bit harder, though. Okay, 0 0.7291 where the 91's repeating. Same steps, it just gets a little more complicated. You'll see. Step one, write an equation. Set x equal to the number. x equals 0 0.729191. There you go. Okay. Step two, we are going to make a second equation by multiplying the original equation by, since we've got two digits, 10 to the second power. So we're going to multiply both sides by 100. There we go, just like we did last time. And again, remember, it's 100 because we've got two digits repeating, so we had to do 10 to the second power. All right, when I do that, 100 times x is 100x. On the other side, when I multiply this by 100, I'm simply moving the decimal point over two spots. So this becomes 72.919191, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, forever. OK. We're ready for step three. Step three is to take this new equation and then take the old equation and subtract them. So I'm going to write this old equation underneath the new equation, 0.729191, da, 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 forever and ever and ever. And here's my subtraction sign. I'm going to subtract them. All right, so when we subtract them, what do we get? 100x's minus 1x is 99x. That's the easy side. The other side looks complicated to subtract. But like I said before, all the repeating de decimals uh, all the repeat yeah, let me say it again. All the repeating digits will subtract off from each other. Because look here. The 9 minus 9, the 1 minus 1, the 9 minus 9, the 1 minus 1, it'll just repeat forever. And 1 minus 1 is 0, 9 minus 9 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. All these repeating digits will subtract off until we get to this place. This is where the digits are different. So this is where we can actually start subtracting. Borrow from the 9, make it an 8, make this 11. 11 minus 2 is 9, 8 minus 7 is 1, drop down my decimal, making sure, by the way, that you lined up your decimals when you wrote this down. 72 minus 0 is 72. All right, I subtracted the two equations. Last step, we need to solve for x. We'll use algebra to do this. Okay, so it says x times 99. I'm going to divide by 99. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And when I do that, the 99s undo each other. I'm left with x equals, and I want a fraction, so I'm going to keep it in fraction form. 72.19 divided by 99 is the same as 72.19 over 99. Of course, I can't give a fraction with decimals in it, so I need to multiply the top and bottom by something so the decimals go away. And notice, I need to move that decimal over two places this time. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 100. All right, when I do that, I move that decimal over two places. I finally get a whole number on top. And on the bottom, 99 times 100 is 9900. This is the fraction I was looking for that's equal to that repeating decimal. It's kind of an ugly fraction, but just to be sure, uh, let's, let's check it. 7219 divided by 9900 should get me 0.7291991919191. There it is. It's 0.7291991919191. All right. So those are the steps to changing a repeating decimal to a fraction. Really be careful here because now we're starting to have a lot of different kinds of digits. And if you move that decimal over, uh, you know, too many times or not enough times, those digits aren't going to line up and they won't subtract off. All right. So work really carefully and work really neatly because. Um, being off a little bit can throw you off completely. All right. So 
With that being said, good luck on your math. Please, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But I will see you next time.